Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about the differences between QLC and TLC SSDs. QLC stands for Quad Level Cell, and it's a relatively new to market technology that allows SSD manufacturers to produce higher capacity drives at lower cost. However, QLC does have some disadvantages compared to TLC or triple level cell drives, and I'm therefore going to talk about the drawbacks. After that, I'm going to do some practical testing. I'm going to compare the performance of this Samsung Qvo 1TB SSD with this Samsung Evo 1TB SSD, as these are based respectively on QLC and TLC technology. To appreciate the differences between QLC and TLC, it's important to understand the basic operation of an SSD's NAND flash memory cells. Two technologies are commonly used, called floating gate and charge trap flash. In both of these, to write or program data, a voltage is applied to move electrons into a floating gate or charge trap layer. The presence of these electrons changes the resistance between the memory cell's source and drain electrodes, and this can be measured by passing a current between them, so allowing a data value to be read from the cell. To erase a cell, a voltage is applied to remove the electrons from the floating gate or charge trap layer. However, repeated program arrays operations weaken the material a cell is made from, which results in electrons either escaping a floating gate or being retained in a charge trap layer. After a certain number of program arrays or PE cycles, it therefore becomes impossible for the cell to reliably function. So, how does this relate to QLC and TLC SSDs? Well, the first solid state drives were SLC or single level cell and used each memory cell to store just one bit of data. The cell was therefore only required to maintain the two possible states of fully programmed or fully erased. Next came multi-level cell, or MLC SSDs, which increased capacity by storing two bits of data in each cell, so requiring cells to reliably distinguish four programmed states. As you can probably guess, triple-level cell, or TLC SSDs, store three bits of data per memory cell, and hence have to distinguish eight cell states. And quad-level cell, or QLC drives, store four bits of data per cell, so must reliably distinguish 16 program erase levels. The more states a memory cell has to distinguish, the less tolerant it becomes of electron leakage or retention, and the more work the drive has to perform when storing data. As a result, as the number of bits stored per cell increases, the fewer PE cycles an SD can endure before failure, and the slower its sustained write speed. The exact number of program array cycles varies, but is up to about 100,000 for SLC, up to about 3,000 for consumer MLC, between about 502,000 for TLC, and between about 300 and 1,000 for current QLC SSDs. This may lead you to conclude that you should never buy a QLC SSD. However, the practical implications depend on how well a drive performs in actual use. So, let's now compare Samsung's latest QLC and TLC consumer SSDs. So, here we have our two Samsung 860 SSDs, which are both 1TB 2.5-inch drives. But the QVO drive over here is a QLC drive, which in August 2019 has a list price of $130 or £116, whilst the EVO drive over here, this is a TLC drive, which is currently listed at $170 or £153. So, based on the official Samsung prices, the uh, QVO, the uh, QLC drive, lives up to the promise of a 25% lower cost per gigabyte. So, what are the practical differences? Well, if we turn these over, we have a look on the back, we can see that the TLC EVO drive bears the strap line, the SSD that makes a difference, and has a five-year limited warranty. Whereas the QLC QVO drive is labelled as a quality and value optimised SSD and has a three-year warranty. 
Delving deeper into the specifications about the Samsung website, the Evo's warranty is actually five years or 600 TBW or terabytes written, whereas the Cuvo warranty is three years or 360 terabytes written. So what Samsung is saying is that it expects the one terabyte Evo to have an endurance of at least 600 PE cycles, whilst the guaranteed endurance of the one terabyte Cuvo is 360 PE cycles. To put this further in context, the warranty on a Samsung Pro 1 terabyte SSD, something like this, which is a MLC drive, two bit stored per cell, this has a five year warranty and 1200 terabytes written. So effectively, with each extra bit of data stored per memory cell, Samsung is roughly halving the data written life expectancy. So let's bring in Stanley the knife and open up these rather exciting boxes. And uh, there we are, we have our two uh, lovely different ways around. There we are, our lovely two new uh, SSDs. And just before we uh, test these out, it's worth mentioning that Samsung uses a technology called Intelligent TurboWrite to improve the write performance of its QLC and a TLC SSDs. And this uses some memory cells as an SLC cache to which data can be written very quickly before it's moved to a QLC or TLC cells when the drive's not receiving data. And by default on a one terabyte drives like these, the SLC TurboWrite cache is six gigabytes, but it can increase to 42 gigabytes. And so this means that continuously writing up to 42 gigabytes of data to these drives should be very fast. But once we've hit the 42 gigabyte cache level, we can't write any more data continuously without writing it to the QLC or TLC cells. So beyond 42 gigabytes of write, these drives will slow down. And this is something we definitely need to take account of in our performance tests. To test out the drives, I'm going to connect them in turn to the Udo Bolt that I looked at recently on this channel, and which has these very handy external SATA connectors. And as you can see, we're starting with the Evo drive, the uh, TLC drive. And if we go into Windows, I'm going to initially test out the drives using a Crystal Disk Mark, a nicer standard test using all the standard settings. This certainly won't push us past the Intelligent TurboWrite limit, but it'll give us some standard results. And as you can see, I picked up the drive here, the Evo drive, which formats to 932 gigabytes. So uh, let's run the tests. And there we are. Those are the results for the Evo, the TLC drive. So what I'm now going to do is to shut down Windows so we can switch the drives over. We can move across to the Cuvo drive, the QLC drive, and then back in Windows, here we are, we can now run the Crystal Disk Mark again, now running on the, on the Cuvo drive. So let's do the test again on, on that SSD. And there we are. We've now got the results for our Cuvo, our QLC drive. And let's bring up the Evo results side by side so we can take a, a look, have a comparison. And I think the first thing to say is that these are very similar results. If you are worried that if you buy a QLC drive, you're going to get significantly impaired performance compared to a TLC drive, then clearly this test suggests you won't, at least with new drives straight out of the box. These are clearly the best results these drives will ever deliver. Just to explain what we're looking at here, the first line of results in Crystal Dismark is a test of reading or writing very large files. So this is representative of what would happen if you were copying very large sets of data between two drives. And this gives us the highest results, but it's not necessarily representative of all real world performance on a computer. And so the results we can see Beneath them, the other three rows of results are tests where Crystal Dismark has been writing very small files, four kilobyte files, and running lots of queues and processor threads simultaneously. So this is much more representative of what happens when your computer is actually working, writing cache files, running programs in Windows, etc. And here, I guess we could say on the very last test, we've got slightly worse performance on the Cuvo, but to be honest, I think that's within the uh, bound of experimental error. So basically in this first test using Crystal Dismark, we can see no significant difference between our TLC and QLC drives. So let's move on to do something that goes beyond the Samsung Intelligent TurboWrite technology.
Right, I've now reconnected the Evo drive for a continuous write test of over 42 gigabytes. Now, I know that transferring this quantity of data in one go is not something that many people do that often. However, if you shoot ProRes or other high data rate video, it's a fairly common activity. And personally, I sometimes record over 100 gigabytes in a day. And in fact, the ProRes files I grabbed for the last segment of this video were about 34 gigabytes in size. Copying such files directly off the media they're recorded on may bottleneck our test. So what I've done here in Windows is I've copied some files to an NVMe SSD, which is on this system, which is much faster than either of the drives we're testing. So I open that up, you'll see we've got, uh, what, 17 files here, totaling about 75 gigabytes in size. These are all ProRes video files. So what I'll do is to uh, copy those files, and then I'll bring up the, uh, here the Evo uh, SSD, which we're going to paste the files to. And I'll also split screen things here and bring up some clocks so we can race the Evo and Cuvo together. And uh, I'll go to paste and we'll start off our test. And uh, there they are, they're running. Let's just bring that on screen so we can see everything properly. Initially, both the drives show a very fast write speed because I forgot to tell you, they've also got a RAM cache. I think it's one gigabyte. So initially, very, very fast. And then they'll drop down to actually writing to initially the intelligent turbo write cache. So that is clearly what they're doing. Slightly faster speed being recorded here on the Cuvo, on the uh, QLC drive. That's very interesting, but uh, that's clearly what we're getting. But the thing that interests me is what happens when we get to the uh, at a 42 gigabyte point. Well, in theory, the intelligent turbo cache will be filled. So let's speed on to there. And uh, here we are, we should be approaching that uh, 42 gigabyte point. I should cease to be able to use the cache and the speed should go down. Be fascinating to see if this actually happens. No evidence yet, must be about this point. Oh, yes. If you look at the Cuvo graph there, it's clearly dropped dramatically in terms of write speed. It's filled the cache, it's filled that 42 gigabyte intelligent turbo cache, has dropped down very much. Interestingly, the Evo hasn't, which I'm slightly bewildered by because I checked the specs very carefully. There is supposed to be the same intelligent turbo write cache, 42 gigabytes on the one terabyte Evo and Cuvo drives, but this suggests that isn't true. I know there is a 78 gigabyte cache on the two terabyte and four terabyte Evos, but it isn't supposed to be there on the one terabyte. Maybe Samsung have upgraded the hardware. But anyway, we can certainly see here the difference between the uh, TLC and QLC implementations here from Samsung. Once you get to that cache position, you've got a much lower write speed on the QLC drive, at least at this quantity of data being written. And uh, we're now almost to the point where the uh, Evo drive has finished. Very close there, it's getting towards the end. Evo drive nearly finished. You can do it, Evo drive. There you are, the Evo drive has finished on two minutes, 41 seconds to write the uh, 75 gigabytes of files. And uh, I know by the magic of filmmaking, that's about 465 megabytes a second across that period of time, which is very good, isn't it? Whereas the, uh, the QLC drive, the QVO is clearly still going. It's gonna take a little while. Let's uh, speed on towards the end of the test. And here we are, the QVO has almost finished. I keep imagining all those billions and billions of, of memory cells of those electrons being moved around into that charge trap flash layer. Fascinating thing how all that's happening as we watch these, uh, these graphs, this progress. And uh, yes, there we are, the QVO has now finished in eight minutes and one second, which means across that period of time for the 75 gigabyte copy, it's achieved a 155 megabytes a second write speed. But of course, that speed is almost irrelevant to site because it just depends how long you copied files for, how big the file copy was going to be, isn't it? I think really what this test highlights to me is that the QVO drive is a very good drive, the QLC drive, providing you aren't gonna copy that much data at once, or you don't mind how long it takes to do the copy. You certainly couldn't be using a QVO drive here, the QLC drive from Samsung for things like actually recording video at high data rates, but for most uses, I'm very impressed with the QVO. We're actually not seeing significant performance hits unless you're continuously writing very large quantities of data.
Today, many desktop PCs are fitted with an SSD to store their operating system and applications, and a much higher capacity hard drive for mass data storage. However, with the creation of QLC SSDs, manufacturers are intent on changing this dual drive setup and allowing more and more people to have a single drive, a single high capacity QLC SSD. Now, how rapidly we might get towards that being the norm will of course depend on the price and the capacity of QLC SSDs. But my guess is that by the end of say 2020, we will have two terabyte QLC SSDs on the market for $100 or less. And by the end of 2021, we will have four terabyte QLC SSDs on the market for $100 or less. And at those sort of price points and capacity, I think that will become transformative. Now, having said that, I'm sure some of you are asking, Chris, would you really trust a QLC SSD, not least given the, the low number of PE cycles? And my best answer to that is that only sort of three or four years ago, I wouldn't have trusted and I didn't trust a TLC SSD. And yet now I would trust something like a Samsung Evo as a boot drive. And indeed, I'm about to test out using the QLC SSD I've shown you in this video as a boot drive, I'm going to be showing you that in a future video. But now that's it for this video. If you enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.